Hi everyone, and welcome back to the CAD CAM course YouTube channel. This video is part of the free CAD beginner tutorial series. In today's lesson, we'll be creating a 90 degree flanged elbow pipe. Whenever you come across a complex part, don't try to model it all at once. Instead, mentally strip away the features. Remove fillets, chamfers, and holes, and focus only on the simple base shapes. Once you build those core shapes, the details can be added later. All right, let's begin with step one. Step one is creating the pipe body. The pipe body is essentially a hollow bend. To create this, we'll use the additive pipe tool, All right? Switch to the part design workbench and create a new sketch. When FreeCAD asks, select the XZ plane. Now let's draw the path, select the polyline tool, start from the origin, and draw a horizontal line towards the left. Press the M key until the tangent arc mode appears, then drag and click, press M again to switch to tangent line mode, and draw a vertical line upward. Click to finish the polyline. Next, we'll add constraints. Select the vertical line and apply the vertical constraint. Select the horizontal line and apply the horizontal constraint. Grab dimension tool, add dimensions, make the horizontal line 150 millimeters, the vertical line 150 millimeters, and the arc radius 260 millimeters. Once the sketch turns green, it is fully constrained, close the sketch, the path is now ready. Next, we'll start by drawing the profile at the end of the path. Click on Create New Sketch, and this time choose the plane that is perpendicular to the path, the YZ plane. This ensures the endpoint of the path lies directly on the sketch plane. Now that we're inside the sketch, let's create the profile. The profile will be a simple circle, so select the circle tool and place the center right at the origin which is also the endpoint of the path. Drag it outward and set the diameter to 210 millimeters. Draw another circle from the same center with a diameter of 290 millimeters. This defines the hollow profile. The sketch is fully constrained. Close the sketch. Now select the profile sketch and activate the additive pipe tool. In the pipe parameters, under path to sweep along, click on the object and select the path. A preview of the curved hollow pipe will appear. Click OK to confirm. The pipe body is now complete and step one is finished. Next, step two, adding the flanges. Now that the curved pipe body is ready, the next step is to add flanges at both ends. A flange, in this case, is simply a rectangular plate with a circular hole in the center. These flanges are what allow the pipe to connect with other parts. Let's start with the first flange. In the Part Design Workbench, select the end face of the pipe, click Create New Sketch. FreeCAD will automatically align the sketch to that face. First, grab the Circle tool. From the center point, draw a circle and set its diameter to 210 millimeters. This matches the inner circle of the pipe. Next, select the Centered Rectangle tool, place the origin at the center, and drag out a rectangle. Now grab the Dimension tool and add the height of the rectangle as 360 millimeters, and width of the rectangle as 360 millimeters. At this stage, the sketch should turn green, which means it's fully constrained. Close the sketch. In the Model tree, select the sketch and activate the pad tool. In the pad parameters, set the length to 50 millimeters. Make sure the pad direction is toward the pipe. To do this, enable the reversed option. Click OK to confirm. The first flange is now complete. Now let's create the second flange on the other side. Select the other end face of the pipe. Again, click Create New Sketch. This time, the circle center is not directly visible. To solve this, use the external geometry tool. Select the pipe circular edge. This will bring the circle and its center into the sketch as a reference. 
with the reference in place, grab the circle tool and draw a circle using that center point. Set the circle's diameter to 210 millimeters. Next, grab the centered rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Constrain its height to 360 millimeters and its width also to 360 millimeters. Once again, the sketch should turn fully green, meaning it's fully constrained. Close the sketch. In the model tree, select it and activate the pad tool. Set the pad length to 50 millimeters. Enable the reversed option so it extrudes toward the pipe. Click OK. The second flange is now complete. With both flanges added, step two is finished. Our pipe now has flat rectangular plates at both ends, ready for bolt holes in the next step. Step three, adding counterbore holes. Now that both flanges are in place, the next step is to add counterbore holes for fasteners. These holes are what allow bolts to pass through and hold the pipe assembly firmly together. We'll create the holes on one flange first and then repeat the process on the other flange. In the part design workbench, select the front face of the flange, click on Create new sketch. Grab the circle tool and draw a small circle anywhere on the sketch. This circle won't actually form the hole itself. It's only to define the hole's position. Now let's constrain it. Add the vertical distance from the circle center to the origin. Set it to 130 millimeters. Add the horizontal distance from the circle center to the origin, also 130 millimeters. There's no need to set the diameter of this circle since the whole tool will handle the size. Once constrained, close the sketch. With the sketch selected, click on the whole tool. This opens the whole parameters window where we can define the type and dimensions of the hole. Now let's set the parameters as per the drawing. Hole diameter, 30 millimeters. Depth through all, which in this case means 50 millimeters. Hole type, counterbore. Counterbore diameter, 60 millimeters. Counterbore depth, 10 millimeters. Drill point, flat. Click OK. The first counterbore hole is now complete. Instead of drawing and repeating this process for the other three holes, we'll use the polar pattern tool. In the model tree, select the hole feature. Then click on Polar Pattern. In the parameters, set the axis to the normal sketch axis. Set the angle to 360 degrees. Set the occurrences to four. Click OK. FreeCAD will now create three additional holes automatically giving us a total of four evenly spaced counterbore holes on the flange. Now let's repeat the same process on the other flange. Select the face of the second flange, click Create New Sketch. To locate the hole position correctly, we need the circle's center point. Use the external geometry tool and select the flange's circular edge. This will bring the circle and its center into the sketch as a reference. Again, grab the circle tool and draw a small circle. Add constraints. Horizontal distance from the circle's center to the origin, 130 millimeters. Vertical distance from the circle center to the origin, 130 millimeters. Close the sketch. With the sketch selected, click the hole tool. In the parameters, set the same values as before. Hole diameter, 30 millimeters. Depth, 50 millimeters. Counterbore diameter, 60 millimeters. Counterbore depth, 10 millimeters. Drill point, flat. Click OK. One counterbore hole is now created. Select the hole feature in the model tree. Activate the polar pattern tool. This time, Set the axis to Select Reference, and then select the circle sketch. Angle, 360 degrees. 
occurrences four. Click OK. The second flange now also has four counterbore holes. With this, step three is complete. Both flanges now have correctly placed counterbore holes ready for bolts or fasteners. Step four, adding finishing features, chamfers, and fillets. Then make sure you're still in the part design workbench. First, let's add the chamfers. Go ahead and activate the chamfer tool from the toolbar. In the chamfer parameters, set the size to 10 millimeters. Now click on select and choose the edges of the two circular faces. Once those edges are highlighted, confirm the operation by clicking OK. Next, we'll add the fillets, activate the fillet tool, and in the parameters, set the fillet radius to 20 millimeters. Click on select again, and this time pick the edges at the corners of the flanges. If the edges on the backside are hard to see, just rotate the model to get a better view. After selecting all the required edges, click OK to apply the fillets. Now rotate the model to expose this backside edges. Click on Fillet tool, select these two edges, change the radius to 10 millimeters, and click OK. And that completes our model in FreeCAD. We started from simple sketches and pads, then added flanges, chamfers, and fillets to finish the part. If you followed along step by step, you should now have a clean and functional 3D model ready for technical drawings or even 3D printing. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming lessons. If you'd like to support my work and help me continue making high-quality FreeCAD tutorials, consider buying me a coffee on Ko-fi. Your support, no matter how small, goes a long way in helping me dedicate more time to creating detailed, beginner-friendly content for this community. You'll find the Ko-fi link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.